I'm not entirely sure what this debut album is, but I know what it isn't, and it is far from a quality, substantive body of work. But honestly, I think the fault belongs to me for even expecting a record that is even remotely close to being a cohesive compilation of tracks that would transport us to the era of Y2K. But we'll touch on that in a few minutes. The year 2023 for Ice Spice catapulted her into a superstar for her viral and chart-topping collaborations in just her first official year in the industry. The rappers had several Billboard Hot 100 song entries last year, with four songs that reached the top 10, which included Karma by Taylor Swift featuring Ice Spice, Boys of Liar Part 2 by Pink Panthers and Ice Spice, Princess Diana with Ice Spice and Nicki Minaj, as well as Barbie World with Nicki Minaj and Ice Spice with Aqua for the Barbie movie soundtrack. Additionally, Ice Spice was nominated for four Grammys at this year's ceremony and took home awards for Top New Artist and Top Rap Female Artist at the 2023 Billboard Music Awards and the Best Breakthrough Hip Hop Artist at the 2023 BET Hip Hop Awards, as well as winning Best New Artist at the VMAs last year. Ice Spice was able to build off of the momentum of her triumph for 2023 by releasing her deluxe EP titled Like, which featured the platinum-selling song Delhi, which peaked at number 41 on the Billboard Hot 100. Fast forward to June 2024, Ice Spice officially announced her debut album Y2K, which was preceded by her first two official singles, Thank You the Ish, Fart, and Give Me a Light, which despite Thank You the Ish reaching number 37 on the Billboard Hot 100, neither song did Ice any favors to generate any favorable anticipation and hype from the general public to warrant a debut album so soon, but we'll get into that momentarily. With the intro track, I don't know if I'm in the minority with this belief, but I think Fat Butt is arguably her best song thus far out of her sparse and deficient discography. It is hard to ignore the Nicki Minaj inspired flows that remind me of songs like Shanghai, Shy Rock, or Bees in the Trap, but Ice perfectly personalized this flow that is not only a huge elevation in her tone and lyricism from her first official song Munch, but it shows that she does have the potential to showcase versatility in her flow that her fans have been begging for. With lyrics like, B, you know you ain't like that, post a pic and he like that, fat butt with a back tat and I been bad like Mike Jack, talk a lot but I ain't saying ish, I hear your song, they ain't playing it, sloppy hoes gonna chat the most if you make it bad, better lay in it. I set the tone in a confident, unshakable, and rightfully egotistical way of reminding people that the queen, Nicki Minaj, says she is the princess despite the negativity from critics and naysayers. Oh sh featuring Travis Scott is utterly Utterly useless. The song and the video brings absolutely nothing to the table, and it is quite perplexing why Travis even agreed to be on the song when well, this is probably one of his most forgettable and rather unremarkable featured verses of his entire career. Why I appreciate Travis's ability to make his presence on songs feel so intergalactic as if you were floating in another galaxy, the production on this song did most of the heavy lifting. When describing Poopa to Rolling Stone, Ice mentioned that Poopa is a Dominican slang term in the Bronx for coochie and that the song is one of the songs where she really pushes the boundaries sonically, as the track features elements of the Chicago-based rapper Chief Keef that he is known for. Ice Spice said that Chief Keef has inspired her since she was a kid. She said that I definitely wanted to branch out more and try different sounds, and it was also just really natural too. I get in the studio and say the first thing that comes to mind. A lot of these beats are still drill beats, but we're using a lot of trap elements too, to spice it up. When Ice Spice rapped, For some reason, I couldn't help but laugh at this part of the song, not necessarily because it was bad, but the delivery and the punctuation of the punchlines is just not convincing enough coming from her. I do think that if she was able to secure a feature from Chief Keef on a song like this, it would have helped taking the song to new heights because the production is truly lethal. Be Unpacking featuring Gunna is the latest in a long line of collaborations he has had with female artists ranging from Doja Cat, Tyla, Normani, and now Ice Spice, and much like every other song, he is either the lead or the featured artist, he rides the beat flawlessly. It is just unfortunate he used such a short yet effective verse on a song that leaves very little to be desired, and despite it being just a little over two and a half minutes long, I could not wait for it to be over. Plenty Sun is essentially the same exact song as the two songs preceding this one, and if it wasn't for the redundant hook on this one, I would not have even noticed it was a completely different song because the production follows the same formulaic trajectory that the album is showcasing up until this point. Also, the hoarseness and the raspy airiness in Ice's voice does not mesh well in this song as it just comes across as if she just woke up and went straight to the studio to spew a whole bunch of random words together that does not bode well sonically. I never bought the PR relationship antics with Ice Spice and Central C because pretty much everyone saw that their increased publicity together was used as a means to gain traction for their song, 
But even though Did It First, which was the fourth single released from the album, wasn't an immediate hit out the gate, I do think the duo delivered a pleasant fusion of a drill and Jersey Club mashup that presents a toxic yet enjoyable cheating anthem that showcases their range in other genres, which feels hypnotic and authentic to their sound. Variety described BB Bell as a spiritual cousin to the song Delhi, and I completely agree. While this song did not immediately impact my soul the way Delhi did when it first came out, I think BB Bell has the potential to grow on me as this song features the same pulsating upbeat tempo that is guaranteed to get the crowd moving in any live performance setting for ice. She did lose me towards the end when she rapped, Life skin but I'm black, you can tell by my hair. I get money, I am a millionaire. Walk in the party, everybody gon' stare. If I ain't the one, why the F am I here? Like several other songs on the album, I do wish BB Bell featured an extra minute of another verse or a bridge, but that may be a little too much to ask with an artist such as this one. I must admit, Thank You The Ish has been on repeat for me ever since I Spice first released it as a single. I will not lie to you guys, this song is just so fun to me and I think it encapsulates I Spice playful, not to be taken serious persona when it comes to rap. The lyrics are so overtly juvenile and simplistic. Additionally, it highlights how Ice 1000% leans into delivering quotable one-liners that is meant to appeal to the Gen Z social media audience that eat this type of childlike lyricism up. I also think it was funny how when this song was first released, people online noticed the pattern in her lyrics by calling out her alleged scat fetish, in which she strangely mentions poop, diaper, and fart an unnatural amount of times, in which one user said that, at this point we gotta ask if she got a scat fetish cause what is with the poop, diaper, and fart bars? In which Ice Spice responded by saying, I got a um, fetish. In which someone else responded to Ice by saying, Miss Spice, I don't know if this is a smart business maneuver, but who am I to judge? Big fan. Give me a light is undeniably terrible. And even though the song sounds tolerable in the context of the entire drill dominated album, it is still a huge disservice to such a classic song as Give Me The Light by Sean Paul. I would have loved to hear Ice Spice rap on top of an actual dance hall production, but once again, that may have been too high of an expectation for an artist such as Ice, who is still rooted in her preferred, predictable, and reliable genre of drill. No rocks, no scissors, just getting that paper is a perfect summarization of the outro track Talk To You Later on Y2K. Ice is incredibly loud on this track, and I think the intentionality behind her increased volume is an emboldened message to her haters, ops, foes, future business partners or colleagues in the music industry that she is on a mission despite the critics and she is here to stay. Ice showcases self-assured aura in her music to showcase that even though people may take her or her music as a joke or a sign of regression in hip-hop's culture decline, to Ice Spice, her community and family, her success and stardom proves that she won at life regardless of how anyone feels about her. As expected, Ice Spice with this album does not fall short of doing three things. Telling us how she is a baddie, telling us how thick she is, telling us how she likes If anyone expected this 23 minute album to feature any hardcore lyricism, it is evident right out the gate that this is not the album for that. And Ice Spice herself has made it abundantly clear that she is not a lyricist. When describing her songwriting process in an interview last year, I said that she does not write her lyrics, but rather freestyles line by line in the studio. Ice went on to say that I wouldn't consider myself a lyricist. Obviously lyrics go into music and I do think about them and I do be having bars in my music, but they're just super simple. I want them to be digestible. I don't want them to fly over people's heads and they never catch it. I want people to hear it right away and be like, okay, that was cute, but it's also fun at the same time. Unlike a lot of people, I am not upset that Ice did not really lean into the entire Y2K era as most people expected, because for me, I realized that she only used that title because she came into this world at the turn of the millennium. While her fashions the last few months gave very much early 2000s, that is pretty much where the stylistic creativity begins and ends for this debut era for Ice. This album did not showcase any culture bending innovative elements that we saw with other debut albums from fellow female rappers like Cardi B's Invasion of Privacy or Nicki Minaj's Pink Friday where we really were able to see an entire palette of flows, melodies, genres, and lyrical subject material that really gives listeners a glimpse of Ice's capabilities as an artist and her story as a person other than being a baddie from the Bronx. Though Ice has dominated on the pop charts, this album was the perfect opportunity to build upon that incredible hype of 2023 and reset the imaginary quote-unquote ticking clock on her relevance in the industry to demonstrate that she is meant to be here. I do appreciate the seamless transitions throughout the album and my favorite song so far would be Fat Butt, Be Unpacking, Plenty Sun, BB Bell, and Thank You The Ish. I will say that my like for those songs is mainly due to the meticulous and solid production from her producer Riot. 
The way he is able to create such an electric, palpable, and visceral club banging record for each and every song, regardless of how silly and the lyrics are, is a testament to his skills and chemistry with Ice Spice. Please let me know in the comments what you all think of Ice Spice's debut album Y2K. What are your likes and dislikes of the project and what are your favorite songs off of it? Also, where do you think Ice Spice goes from here? Do you see this album having any growth or longevity to help sustain her career? Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell. And I'll see you next time.